Today's episode is brought to you by Monday.com. Monday.com is a customizable platform that gives teams the ability to easily create the tools they need and want for their work. Teams can create any workflow on Monday.com to manage anything they need, projects, processes, leads, clients, requests, or whatever your team manages. I love the platform because it's super flexible so teams can customize it to fit their needs, create a workflow from scratch, or simply pick a template, get started right away, and just adjust it however you want. Sign up for your free two-week trial at monday.com today. Again, just visit monday.com for your free two-week trial. Today's episode is brought to you by Upstart. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. I love Upstart because it looks at more than just your credit score, like your income and employment history. This means they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash advice. That's upstart.com slash advice. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash advice. Okay, Ash, I got a fun fact for you. I love a fun fact. I pay, I'm going to be nice because I had this really good one about farts. That was actually very interesting. Disgusting. But I was like, Ashley's, I could tell that like you wouldn't take it. Mm. Well, I'm glad that you know There's sometimes that well. when you're in great moods that I'm like, I feel like I, I could feed anything to her. I wasn't getting that vibe from you today. Yeah. And so I picked one that had to do with rhythm. Oh, okay. And sea lions are actually the only animal that's able to clap to a beat. Because they have rhythm. <laughs> I can that see that. Cool. They have rhythm. That's so cute. Like now, all I want to do is like dance with the sea lion or on a little hip hop beat, and they're like boom, cat, boom, cat, boom, cat, double boom, time boom, now, cat, boom, 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 cat, boom, cat, boom, boom. cat. <laughs> Welcome to unsolicited advice. <laughs> Not gonna help me out there. That's okay. horrible. Roll the thing, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Unsolicited Advice. I'm Ashley. I'm Taryn. And we are here to advise you guys as we normally do. Um, I just wanted to just go ahead and just say this from the very beginning. We still have mugs and hats for sale. Mugs and hats. Mugs and hats. Hats and mugs. Mugs and hats. All of the things are still there. And uh, it is a limited quantity, but we still have some. So I just wanted to like give you guys a little PSA and just say that, that they're still there. Yeah. And please, you know, go go get your hands on some. Um, I, hands. I know we had said that it was going to only be for the weekend, but turns out we made too many mugs and hats. Whoops. And we still have some for you guys. So um, surprise. It's perfect, too, because it's starting to get like summery feeling. So mm-hmm. I feel like um, mm-hmm. it'd be a good time to like get a good hat shade your eyes it's a very good hat mm-hmm. i went on so far for me today i always sit with my arm right here oh okay go ahead um <laughs> i was like just shut you down so fast i turned and i was like oh am, am i, I are, are we in something i didn't know about? just kidding go ahead you went on what <laughs> uh we went on a little staycation for my sister's birthday this mm-hmm. weekend and you know, i'm just gonna say i brought mine and it was great great it was great. great blocked the sun it did its job Also, like black is a solid color for a hat because, Mm -hmm. like, if you get anything on it, like, it's easy to, you know. Yep. (laughs) Everyone's like, we know, Taryn, we've had clothing before. (laughs) But, you know, just thought I'd share. So get your hats, get your mugs. And uh, yeah, how are you, Ash? I'm doing great. I'm just coming off of, I feel like my sister's birthday was a marathon and if anyone else has like a super close best friend or siblings that you like love to like go hard for their birthdays you understand what I'm talking about because especially for her because I feel like she was our first uh like quarantine COVID birthday and oh yeah we did that drive-by it was so weird yeah we did a whole thing for it last year and we kept it very you know no one came over but we did like one of those car drive-by birthdays that everyone was doing Mm -hmm. and it was so fun but then we were kind of feeling bummed because we were like man it's been a year and we can't do anything so we we splurged and got a hotel room yes 
and all we did was lay by the pool all day and it was great. Um, but man, it took a lot out of me. I feel like quarantine really like really (laughs) my stamina is down. Like I can't hang anymore. I feel, but see, I think the thing is like, we were already headed in that direction. Mm -hmm. Like I remember like I'd go out when I was younger, I used to go out. It would be like four in the morning and someone would be like, let's go drive through Del Taco. And I'd be like, yeah, you know what I mean? Well, younger now I like get so tired, but I think on top of that quarantine has just aged like everyone because Mm -hmm. we, our bodies like don't do stuff and it doesn't handle it doesn't handle it well no um i feel like i'm going to be recuperating even though all i did was like lay by the pool and eat a lot yeah <laughs> also i we got so burnt because our skin was like what is all this sun oh my god <laughs> what I is was, the sunlight i put on i mean well i didn't it wasn't it wasn't a mistake but I put on a lot of self tanner because I was like, I'm going to freaking glow out there. I I'm so about pale that when you started and putting I, it on. I put it on and I was like, I look so good. <laughs> I am feeling myself, but it masks when you're burnt. Yeah. Not me. Like you didn't see it fully. You know, I was in my mom visor. I kept looking down and I was like, I was like, am I, am I getting any color whatsoever? Cause I don't feel like it. And then my other friend, my sister's friend, Remy was getting really burnt. And I was like, well, I, I guess I'm fine. It was a lie. She was not fine. The self tanner masked it. And it, I was in fact burnt. Yep. It was rough. It's a true story. No one packed aloe vera. It's a true story. It's a true story. How are you, Taryn? I'm great. Um, I definitely feel like. What was I just, I literally, my she brain went off into the distance. I got and- distracted by something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was like a real lifetime of how my mind works. I don't know what I was going to say, but I think I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I love that for you. <laughs> how about we get into a tearing it up? Um, you guys already know, but tearing it up is one of our favorite segments. It's when you guys send in stories that are hilarious and Taryn and I get a good laugh at it. Um, this one is titled... A porta potty horror no. story. Porta potties are my nightmare. Porta potty horror story. I kind of like it. Just kind of like rolled off the tongue. Yeah, the title definitely got me. Okay, here we go. Hi, Taryn and Ash. Hello, my name is Jill, and I have a super embarrassing tearing it up for you, but it has a good ending. Ha ha ha. How can <laughs> how can that be? I have Jill? no idea. We will find out. I feel like you're setting us up for failure, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> OMG, I love you guys so much. I've been listening to you guys since quarantine. You're definitely my favorite people to listen to while doing Aww. my homework, driving, or literally anytime and anywhere, LOL. Okay, so my story begins about seven years ago. I was 11 years old. I'm 18 now. I was at my big sister's softball game. The other players had siblings there too, one of them being a high school aged boy. I didn't know him that well, but I knew his sister played on the same team as my sister and our moms were friends. I had to go to the bathroom while at the softball game, being that we were at a softball field in the middle of nowhere, I ran to the nearest porta potty. No. I ran in and sat down, and as I was doing my business, the high school aged boy decided he had to use the porta potty as well. I guess I forgot to lock it because <gasps> mid P he opened the door on me. I screamed, he screamed and slammed the door shut. I quickly got up and locked it. I remember running to my dad afterwards and crying. (laughs) (laughs) I sat in the car until the game was over because I didn't want to be near the boy who had just walked in on me and it felt quite dramatic. Flash forward seven years. I am now a senior in high school and my favorite teacher is in need of a long-term substitute teacher. I'm very close with my teacher who is in the need of the substitute. So going into the process of finding this new teacher, I knew I would have to be friends with them as well. I'm sitting in class and it is announced that I'll change his name for the story. Mr. Quote Smith will be our new long-term sub. I recognized the last name, but couldn't remember where I'd heard it before. The next day he comes into class and it's him. The high school boy who walked in on me (laughs) using the porta potty when I was 11 was now 25 and a substitute teacher. (laughs) I love this. And it gets better because it wasn't just a 
one day substitute teacher. He was a long-term substitute teacher. (laughs) He's been my long-term sub for about six months now. About a month into teaching, I told him that I had to tell him a secret. (laughs) I explained my side of the story and he actually remembered. He apologized for the incident and we now have an inside joke. So I guess an embarrassing moment from when I was 11 led me to a friendship between my sub teacher and I small world, I guess. LOL. Thanks for reading. Sorry if it was long. I just needed to tell the whole story because it's one of my favorites. Love you guys. That's amazing. Seven years. Like I remember reading it and I was like, oh, well that's not that bad. Everyone's been walked in on a porta potty before. Like it's not that bad, but then to see it like clearly like him being older and then like seven years later being like, oh, now you're my teacher. Well, I don't know about you, but when I go to the bathroom in a porta potty, yeah, I'm not attractive looking. Like oh, no I'm hovering. I have like both legs like pushed, trying to like hold myself up. I'm hanging on to like whatever pole is in front of me and just kind of like dangling over. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like you're just on the toilet and you're like, oh, it's like I would have fallen in. Oh, I learned from a young age and I, I've perfected it because of all of the music festivals that I go to. Yeah. <laughs> I hover. Right. You're hovering and I hold on to the door. So even if someone pulls. Oh, I just can't pull it for support. I never thought about that. I'm literally like it's locked and I'm holding it because I've had too many people walk in on me and it's just not it's not cool. Yeah. You know, it's a technique. It's a natural thing. Technique. It's a natural thing, Ash. When we launched our podcast, we definitely didn't know how big and complex it was going to be. No one warned us. We weren't ready. No one overwhelming us. But we are so thankful for places like monday.com where we can have the confidence that unsolicited advice can scale without scaling complexity. Let me break it down for you guys. Monday.com is a customizable platform that gives teams the ability to easily create the tools they need and want for their work. The platform is super flexible so teams can customize it to fit their needs, create a workflow from scratch, or simply pick a template, um, which is what me and Taryn like to do. (laughs) We always go for a template and then just kind of like adjust it along the way. It's suitable for any team size and teams can create their workflow on monday.com to manage anything they need, whether it's projects, processes, leads, clients, requests, or whatever your team manages. So we get a ton of emails from you guys and they're honestly super hard to keep track of. Sometimes Taryn would choose a story that I chose and sometimes I would choose a story that she had already chosen and vice versa and you get the whole picture. It got to the point where we had to play rock, paper, scissors for the stories, but instead of fighting it out, We now use monday.com to organize tasks, claim stories, and best of all, we can remain besties instead of becoming mortal enemies. Monday.com has literally saved this podcast. Monday.com work OS is great for small operations like this podcast, and it's also great for bigger operations too. That's the benefit of being scalable. With work OS, managers can see what their team members are working on with no check-ins necessary. Teams have the autonomy they need and managers can keep track of the big picture. So guys, it's a win-win. So if you would like to sign up for your free two-week trial at monday.com, you can head there today. Again, visit monday.com for your free two-week trial. I feel like something everyone can relate to is the fear of debt. Oh. Right? Oh. (laughs) Everyone. We all fear debt. Which we are so pumped to be partnering today with Upstart, who is here to help us all get ahead. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. Wow, wow, people, wow. 50, 50, 50. And my favorite part about Upstart is that you can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. That's so fast. That's unheard of. So fast. Superhero powers. I love Upstart because it looks at more than just your credit score, like your income and employment history. This means they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. So find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash advice. Again, that's upstart.com slash advice. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. 
Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash advice. Okay, so I will get into my story. My story is called, My Attitude is Affecting Those Around Me. Ooh. So let's get into it. Hey, Taryn and Ash, you can say my name. Thank you for <laughs> clarifying because I'm going to be honest, I had already forgot, even though I had just read your story this morning. Um, <laughs> her name is Grace, and she said, hopefully it's okay if I cut right to the chase. I just got done crying, and I need to write this all down before I forget. I do love you girls, though, a lot. <laughs> I love that, like, <laughs> she feels like she has to defend not doing a paragraph yeah praising us <laughs> and i just want to say it's not an expected thing it is a loved and cherished thing for sure mm -hmm. but don't worry girl get right to your story oh, it's expected for me <laughs> okay well all of these compliments go straight to my head and i love it <laughs> i do love you girls a lot though and i hope your night is ending on a much better note same to you, too, listeners. I care about y'all, too. Oh, oh, we love the fam love. Okay. I feel like it would help a lot to know that I am four-wing three. So emotions are everywhere, to say the least. And fours are very, like, artsy, very emotional. And threes are perfectionists. So I can see why you think your emotions are everywhere. <laughs> Um, my mood swings are frequent and ever changing when I'm happy. I'm very happy. And when I'm upset, I'm very upset. I like to think that I'm happy more often than upset, but when the upset train rolls around, I'm literally sadness from inside out Aww. and it's terrible. I think of all the things that went wrong in the day, moldy bread again, I'm starting a video late again. I'm uninspired. I'm stuck at a job with no natural lighting. I need to grocery shop. My period came early, etc. And then at the very end of the night, like tonight, I break down. I cry, sob, tears of flow, and my husband can't take it. He's tried all day to help me, waking me up super sweetly, texting me throughout the day, saying he'll help me do chores around the house. And I acknowledge the fact that he's trying to help, but I'm still a mess. And there's only so much a guy can do before the joy from the inside out becomes sucked into sadness too. And so he got upset with my attitude, which then produced a fight, which made our night ruined. I want to have a good night with him. I want to be happy, but this happens once every month. I get so upset and depressed, and then we go full circle. Me telling him I'll try harder to be happy, me trying, me doing great, and then sadness hits again. I don't want to make him upset. I don't want to make him hate being around me and making marriage life hard for either of us. We love each other so much. How can I actually change? How do I not go full circle and end up in the same place again? I just want to love. Like any good for, I love to love. I have deep emotions and I wear everything out on my sleeve, which makes the sad emotions heavily present too. I feel like I've tried everything, thinking different thoughts, listening to good music, eating foods that I like, doing my makeup, making my bed, telling myself I'm happy to trick myself into believing it. I don't know. I need a new method to permanently fix the issue. I can't be sadness. I need to be joy. Thanks for listening, girls. I can't wait to hear what you might have to say about this. I'm really in a funk. And if you don't read this on the podcast, that's okay too. It was good to write it all out and quote unquote talk about it. I'll hear you Monday. Sincerely, the girl named Sadness, whose real name is Grace. Oh, the girl named Sadness. Grace. First of all, I'm sending you the biggest virtual hug that you ever did see. Taryn gives feel. the best hugs. Um, and I really, this really got to me because I, I feel like I'm more often on the opposite side of like, I get really affected by people's moods, but I have, my empathy level is like through the roof. And just hearing how hard, not only like, this is so much bigger than just you experiencing your own emotions. Cause now you have to deal with like 
the guilt that comes with, you know, making someone else upset and like wanting to be happier and just like not being able to do it. Like it all sounds so exhausting. And I just, I'm very sorry that you're going through this. And I really hope that you are giving yourself grace, grace, um, because like, that's, that's a hard place to be in. Yeah, fully. I feel like, um, not only are you going through everything that you just listed, but also I feel like we talked about this on the podcast a lot. We're still in a world pandemic and that's a yeah. hard thing to process and a lot to deal with having come out of quarantine and trying to figure out what like future life looks like in the near like next couple months, you know, yeah. um, having to process through all of that on top of what you're doing is exhausting. And she, Taryn's right. You need to be more gracious with yourself, mm-hmm. Grace. Um, the, I mean, the next thing I would say is I feel like you are at a place where you are wanting to figure out like what the next step is. And I feel like Taryn would agree with me. I feel like getting help is the next step. Oh yeah. Fully. Because if you've tried to have these conversations with him and he's tried to have conversations with you, like having him be an accountability partner to a degree is great, but he also can't be your savior and yeah. that it's okay to have to ask someone else for help in that area. Yeah. You know, someone who's experienced and there's so many, um, places you can go to for that help right now, which is also that you can do from home and stuff like that, yeah. phone calls and, and whatever. Um, but I feel like, I feel like you both might need that you for yourself and, and him for navigating life, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with you as a, as a couple, like that's hard, um, having to do it together. So maybe you guys could both have your own counselors and then every once in a while have like a couple's counseling just to like touch base and work on communication. Yeah. I think, I think definitely like you should start with yourself, like Ash was saying. And then I think there's something valuable of having, so it's not all on you, like having your counselor, maybe have a session where your husband comes in and they, they help explain to him like where you're coming from things that he can do, but also, I mean, there, there is a sense of responsibility you should feel in regards to like wanting to be a positive, loving person for him too. Like that's a relationship, right? So like in some ways, like there should be things in there that you work on that you're able to, like really try to put him first and encourage him and be positive for him so that he's feeling that stuff too. And I think if you start to look at that as something that you're doing for him, hopefully it'll break out a little bit more of like, well, I'm feeling so sad. So like, why would I act this way? But really being like, well, this is something he needs. So like, I love him and I'm going to do these things for him. And even if that's just a couple things at first, like making sure every time you walk in a room, like you go up to him, you say hi, you hug him and you ask him how his day was or tell him something you appreciate about him. Just those type of things when you get in the practice of trying to like push through and focus on the positive things in life, like it really does start to affect you. Um, But I think that getting help is something that is so valuable for something like that. And I know the one time like I went into therapy, I remember like crying to my mom because she was like, well, do you just want to talk about it? Like what's going on? And I remember that feeling of being like, I can't do this anymore. Like I knew I was stuck in it and I needed someone to help me come out of it because I felt like I couldn't really, I didn't know how to like, how much to put on other people. Does that make sense? No, it makes so much sense. And I I think what's, what's hard, something Taryn, and I like had to figure out when she first moved in. Cause we went from being best friends to like also roommates and she very much needed me to greet her in the morning. Mm-hmm. I had, I've never done that. Like never, I've never even had my mom. My mom would just come up and hug me and it would bother me. <laughs> I love my mom to death, but <laughs> she would just come and take, you know, like she would get, she would get her hug in and I would just be like, uh, <laughs> Why do you, why are you so cl- needy? You know, um, Taryn was the first person to ever be like it. Dri- my, my whole day depends on how you respond to me in the morning. And obviously to a degree that's, there's a healthy point and there's like a non-healthy point depending on how dependent you are. But like me being 
the other person in the relationship had to be like, oh, if she needs this, then I'm going to start doing that for her. I might not need it, Mm -hmm. but Taryn needs it. Yeah. And it's all I have to do is freaking show up. Yeah. You know, and I, I have to, I had to learn that like Taryn needs this to know that I care for her. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, for sure. And also like for your husband, like having him maybe like when you're in a really good place, talking to him about like, okay, well, what are the things that are like super overwhelming? And then what are ways like I can help you? Cause like for me, it felt so foreign to have to be like, Ash, like I need you to like, look at me while I'm talking to you right now, or like, listen to this story or like say good morning. Mm -hmm. But for her, because I felt like that would be offensive if I were to tell her that to be like, Hey, like, can, like, I need you to like focus on me for a second. Mm -hmm. But for her, she told me, she's like, I need you to just say that because for me, it's not intentional. And so like, once like we like learn certain things like that, then it became very much where it's like, I know that if I need something, I can just verbalize it and she'll be like, oh, okay. Like, what's up? You know what I mean? This is not the most relatable thing. If, if I like mess up and don't say hi and and that, that affects Taryn a little bit, you know, then there's this like unspoken, like tension because Mm -hmm. Taryn thinks I'm mad at her. And then because Taryn thinks she's mad, she kind of, I'm mad. She kind of backs off a little bit. And then when Taryn backs off, I'm sitting here going, wait, what did I do? (laughs) Is she mad at me? And there's this weird tension in the room that I guarantee because stereotypically I'm the man in the relationship. I guarantee that's what he's (laughs) feeling. He's feeling you feeling sad. And I've, I've lived with people in the past that struggled with severe depression that affects everyone. And that's not your fault, but like, he probably doesn't know how to handle it. So you need to sit him down and say, Hey, I don't expect you to carry this burden fully, but I need you to understand that this is where I'm at. Like I wouldn't even hold back. I would tell him everything. I'd say like, here's what I'm struggling with. And I would love if you could help me with just this much yeah, so that I can figure out my own and like move forward. Fully, fully, fully. Um, So you had mentioned, you're like, I don't know what else to try. So honestly, my number one thing would be to, to get help, to like seek help just because, and even if it's just like for a month, cause you said it happens like once a month, right? Like, and if it's always happening like around your period, then that might be like something else you need to seek Mm -hmm. out to like go like check your hormone levels or something. Cause there could be something else that's going on in your body. That's affecting you. We've had multiple friends discover things recently. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so I would definitely look into maybe first start by like talking to your doctor. I would get, I would get like, for me, it helps me to get almost like not scientific about it, but very like make a notes thing in your phone and be like funk diary (laughs) and like Mm -hmm. write down like, okay, like on the fourth this month, um, like at 10 AM, like it started. And then on the sixth at 8 AM, it stopped, whatever. And then see if you can track, because if it is always only happening, like during your cycle, then that might be something you need to seek out. But if it's happening other times, like when your funk starts, I would trace back the day before or the week before and be like, okay, was this like extra stressful? Mm -hmm. Was I feeling like neglected in any way? But I would kind of get like, start taking notes on it and see if you can find a pattern. Um, If it's just all over the place or like during it, I think we've talked about this so many times. You can't expect to all of a sudden try new things and them to be successful when you're already deep in something. What is it? It takes like two weeks to form a new habit. Yeah, to form new habits, but also like you should have a game plan going in. So when you are in a good place, you should set out like with your husband, with yourself. If I start to enter into this place, these are the things I'm going to do. And then that way, when you're in it and you already, your mind's everywhere, your emotions everywhere, you have a plan. But, um, psychology today wrote out like a really simple, like 10 ways to improve your mood. And I'm just going to point out a couple of them. Um, one of them was to spend time with a sympathetic friend. And I thought that this was really good because there's nothing worse than when you're sad and you tell your friend that you're sad and they just try to fix it and they don't take time to just like sit in with you and address that they're sorry that you feel sad. Like that's the quickest way to make someone feel like they don't matter. So I think that like you need to find and 
if that's your husband, great. But I think that what you're writing is that you're trying to like make sure that he's not getting everything. So I would find a friend that you're like, Hey, like I would love, like when I'm feeling down, like, can you just be someone that like I lean on? And I guarantee you, if you find someone who has that skill of being empathetic or sympathetic, they're going to be like, yes, please. Like I'm mm-hmm. here when you need me. So that was one, um, to find someone who can address like the emotion part and not just try to fix it right at first. Um, another one that I th- saw that I thought was like really good. Um, so in regards to fighting off negative thoughts is pre making a list about all of the positive things that you're thankful for in your life. And sometimes even just like when you're feeling sad, going through those and being like, wow, like I really am so blessed. So like I'm in this place, but like, I'm okay because I do have so many like valuable things in my life. I have a little daily planner and included in that is a little portion in my planner that says gratitude. Yes. And it's, it's so funny. You you think it takes a lot of time, but it doesn't. I'll just come up with like three things that I'm grateful for my body, my body, my family, my health, you know, and, and I'll be like, I'm really grateful for those things. I'll take a second to be like, wow, thank you for this. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm really happy for this. And then I'll go about my day. No, it's so true. Um, another thing was, I mean, just everything in here is being patient with yourself, getting sleep, like maybe on those days where you're having a funk, like you and your husband know you have this routine where like you put on a movie that like makes you feel good. You like turn down the lights, maybe get like a galaxy light, like something that's going to make you happy. And like you go to bed early and like he just chills in the living room and gives you space. Like that's what I'm saying about like finding that Mm -hmm. routine. Um, our galaxy light broke. Oh no. I have one in my room. Oh, I got you. God. Um, also like not making big, important decisions or discussions when you're in that state. So all of this stuff, I mean, obviously I don't feel like we gave you this like groundbreaking like tips, but I think you just need to find those things that work for you, whether it's like a scent, something like tactile you can have with you, anything to distract you from like what you're in. But I think ultimately it's going to be seeking professionals to find out exactly what's going on and then bringing your husband into the like solutions that you're finding as you go. Mm Mm-hmm. But yeah, thank you so much, Grace, for sharing this. And I think, honestly, I think the strongest, most beautiful part of anything is this exact moment where you're like, I accept my limitations and I acknowledge that like people are put in my life, professionals are put in my life to to help me where like I'm lacking and like that's okay. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it it's a very pivotal point in your life when you realize like this is something that's going to better my life. And then you like take charge of it. Yeah. I feel like that's the first step. And I, I, I swear, I, I think it's going to be all up from there. Not like yeah. you won't experience these things in the future. Cause, cause you will, I think we are all struggling with stuff like this right now. Yeah. Um, but I think this is going to give you tools to combat it later on in the oh, future. Totally. Oh, one last thing. Like I don't underestimate the power of like a tiny second with your husband, like for me, especially like if, if you just take the time to like, when you tell, you can tell when someone's starting to try to make you feel better. I'm sure you can tell all the time when like, I can tell you're in a funk and all of a sudden I'm like, Hey, like I'll be in my room and she'll like water? poke her head like, in. She'll be like, watch a movie? It's always like, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> like very timid. But and still. she's like, get out. <laughs> I'm like, leave me alone. Um, <laughs> no, but the second you can feel yourself going or you can feel him noticing, don't underestimate just a simple, like I would walk up to him, like put your hands on his face, make eye contact with him and be like, I love you so much. And this has nothing to do with you. I'm not mad at you. You haven't done anything. I'm feeling some type of way right now and I'm processing it, but I want to reassure you that like, I love you. And I'm so thankful for like the fact that you're here for me, anything to come after that, I guarantee he's going to be like, Oh, okay. Like Mm -hmm. there's something so powerful about a reassurance of someone just telling you like, I love you and you're valued and you're important and I appreciate you. So I think 
I think in the meantime, while you're figuring these things out, I would make sure you have those moments with him. And even if you're so sad and you're like, everything feels overwhelming. Like if you can summon up the effort for that, I think that he'll appreciate it so much. Like so much. Can I add one more thing? Yeah. I feel like we're going to talk about this forever. Thank you so much. Which is one more thing. (laughs) Uh, I feel like there's been multiple memes going around about this and it just like came into my head. So I'm going to talk about it um, where it shows like a person and what they're struggling with. And it really, I think goes a long way. And I think it's very important that you realize that the thoughts that you have, the anxiety that you feel, the depression you're feeling, that's not you. Yeah. That's something that you're struggling with uh-huh. at the moment, but that's not you. They don't own you. Mm-hmm. They're separate from you, yes. but you are currently struggling with them. Yes. But they're not you. No, it's not you. Yes. Yeah. No, it's cool. It, it needs to be treated like a disease kind of like, yeah. this is like, I'm, I'm dealing with like an illness right yeah. now. And one day, you know, I'll get out of it soon, but like, yes, it's not you. I think I shared like with my, one of my main things that I got out of counseling was when she had me draw yes. myself and then my like thoughts and depression and anger and like all the stuff separate. And once I started to view it like that mm-hmm. of like, when I would feel sad, I would get angry at my like stress and anxiety as a separate thing and it would help me not to get so like angry at myself and that is I think you're so right like that's such an important thing Mm -hmm. all this to say (laughs) I think we're gonna stop now who knows (laughs) um we're here for you Grace and I'm so sorry you're going through this and I wish I could physically hug you but I hope you know you are loved and you're important and you're gonna get through this like you are going to get through this even when it feels heavy. So um, seek out people, lean on your husband, make him feel loved, and you got this. You've got this. So you know growing up, like there's always like that one door, that one window that you always imagine like someone coming through. Mm -hmm. For me, it was always the like window next to my front door Mm -hmm. it always scared the crap out of me Mm -hmm. and now I never have to worry about that because our security system from Simply Safe is amazing and there's no time day or night where I have to worry because I know my house is always being guarded Ash guys even if you already feel safe that might not be true of everyone in your home and that was st- ter- stereo, stereo, <laughs> stereo. <laughs> and that was stereotypically me. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you've never had a conversation about that, it's honestly not a bad idea to do so. You don't know how the other people in your mm-hmm. house are feeling. They might mm-hmm. be scared. Me. Every single night. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I love my Simply Safe because I just think it feels really good to be able to press the home button on my Simply Safe keypad and hear the bass say, alarm, alarm on. on. Wow, we didn't talk about that. I know. <laughs> Like just those words, I'm sleeping better. Yes. I'm seriously. sleeping better already. And the thing is, Simply Safe just makes it so easy. It takes about two minutes to customize the system on their website, simplysafe.com slash advice. And the system arrives in about seven days. Guys, that's so quick. So that's quick. That's so quick. And then it takes just 30 minutes to set up. I've done it myself. Taryn helped me. It was really easy. So easy. Go to simplysafe.com slash advice today to customize your system and get a free security camera. You also get a 60-day risk-free trial, so there's really nothing to lose. That's simplysafe.com slash advice. Okay, moving on to my story. Uh, This one is titled, How Can I Build a Stronger Relationship with My Dad? Mm. I know. I was like, this is different. Let's talk about this. Um, Yeah, I'll just dive right into it. Hi, Ashley and Taryn. First of all, I will start off this email like every other email because I love you too. She puts in all caps. You guys are such kind, loving, funny, and amazing souls, and you guys inspire me constantly. Thank you so much for the constant advice that you two give. They really help me. Ah, We got you. She says, you can totally say my name, smiley face. My name is Joyce, and I just turned 15 years old. I have had this problem for the longest time, and I don't really know what to do. Here's the problem. My relationship with my dad has been, let's just say, dry. I love him so much, and I'm so thankful that God provided me with a dad in my life, but it is hard to demonstrate that love to him. I have always had an awkward awkward relationship with him. With my mom, we're basically besties, but with my introverted dad, it has always been 
kind of just really awkward. Whenever he's near me, it is usually silent because he is always on his phone and is an extreme introvert. And if we do talk to each other, it only lasts for about 15 seconds. And he goes back onto his phone or whatever he's doing. This happens frequently, and I don't get to see him often because he's at work from 9 to 5. When he's at home, though, he's addicted to his phone, watching YouTube, and it makes me sad to see that he enjoys spending his time like that when I want to be the one that he spends time with. This relationship has just been at a plateau, and I'm scared that it'll go downhill eventually. These constant thoughts lead me to being doubtful of his love for me, and I apologize in advance for sounding selfish, but sometimes he acts in a way that makes me think he doesn't love me as much as I love him. I also feel at fault and guilty because I should be stepping up and initiating things to do with him and just talk freely with him, but I just don't know how to because his interests and mine are very hard to line up with the awkwardness. Everything just leads to the same result. I want my bond with him to endure as long as possible, and I want it to flourish. If you two can provide me with some kind of advice on how to build a long-lasting relationship with my dad, it would be so, so great because the advice you two give are just always so wholesome and helpful. Thank you so much for all you guys do, and even if you guys don't answer this email on the pod, I am just so thankful for being able to rant about it Mm -hmm. um, and spend this time to let out my concerns. Thank you so much, and God bless, Joyce. Ugh. Tell me why. Tell I feel me why. Like, actually, I'm very confident that this is such a common problem with fathers. Yes, and daughters. Yes. Like, <laughs> just father figures in mm-hmm. general, it's hard to connect with. I don't know if it's because the mother gives birth to us or, or and, I, I, and I'm not excusing. I know we, we some, yeah. there are mother issues also, but I think stereotypically, like, daddy issues is a thing, and, mm-hmm. and it's a struggle to connect with our fathers. I think, too, like... I feel like women, again, we've talked about this before. And and obviously this is not like a blanket statement. Everybody is mm-hmm. individual and different, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. I hate that I have to cover that because just like sure everyone, <laughs> everyone is always looking to get offended nowadays. And like, it makes it so hard to have just like, like conversation because yes. I'm like, anything that I say that offends someone, I guarantee deep down, like it was not intentionally meant to offend anyone Mm -hmm. but with the climate of like our society it's just so hard to have a free everything I say I'm like oh my god what if like they take it like this are you a fam they know are you a fam knows but I think generally women are a lot more in touch with their emotions and so we're able to like seek out and like notice others emotions and like talk about things Also, there's something that happens in growing up where like kids developmentally will either like they'll like pair off with their dad for a period of time and then they pair off with their mom Mm -hmm. and they're like learning and like molding in different ways. So I think there's just something about like a mother, though, that she's like provides a lot more of that like emotional stability and it's it's very interesting and I definitely went through this Mm -hmm. when I was especially that age you know yeah yeah I think you know traditionally the father goes to work nine to five and quote provides for the family and the mom like stays home and takes care of the family right yeah like he provides like the structure and safety whereas mom is like the yeah. loving nurturing yeah. and yeah. obviously that's like the traditional oh, yeah. like family so stereotypical. Yeah. yeah stereotypical family dynamic um but I feel like a lot has changed over the last you know couple mm-hmm. generations and um I would say I feel like you you spoke very eloquently in this email and I feel like Um, I feel, I feel like there's a similarity to Taryn's email and this email. I feel like you might need to tell him very, not bluntly, but just a little more boldly and just be like, Hey, like, this is what I'm needing from you. And I'm not feeling it. Like, can we do something together? And something that always helped me and my sister growing up because my dad worked too. And I, you know, didn't get to see him as much as I got to see my mom, me and my mom. Oof, we butt heads for a while. <laughs> I was very much a daddy's girl. Um, and I think one of the things that like helped me and my dad a lot was we would do daddy daughter dates for as long as I can remember, literally to this day. Um, we'll like schedule a time where just like me and him go out 
to dinner or go see a movie mm-hmm. or just like it's usually dinners <laughs> or yeah. dessert um but I've done it with him since I was I think four yeah and I didn't get I wasn't able to like speak with him as often as easily because my mom is just the most talkative person on the planet and my dad's more quiet too. So I feel like I can really relate to you in that. But those very intentional times together, I think helped our relationship a lot. Yeah. I think you definitely need to like, well, for, can I just say, baby girl, you are 15 years old. Like this does not fall on your shoulders. You Mm -mm. should not be having guilt or be thinking, I'm not doing something or like, babe, like that's not like as kids, we're supposed to grow up and we're supposed to feel that. And unfortunately that's not the way the world works and human relationships are so hard. So I just want, like, I want you to like, not put all of that on yourself. Like it's okay for you to feel sad and to feel frustrated that you're feeling like you have to make all these steps, you know? Yeah. But I will say from what I learned with my dad, I think it was honestly around your age. We figured out that we are literally each other's opposites. (laughs) Like Ash knows. (laughs) We, I think we came to this point where we were both able to acknowledge each other's strengths and personalities and see like the beauty and what we each had to offer instead of me wanting him to be more like me or him wanting to be me to be more like him. And once we did that, like things got so much better. And I think like with any relationship, like I feel like you can sit with him and have like a super just like up like blunt talk with him and be like, hey, dad. I know that you love me and I hope you know how much I love you, but sometimes I feel like I just want to spend more time with you and I want us to have a better relationship. And so I would love if we can come up with like ways that we each would like to have like some quality time. And then if you, if he loves to sit and watch YouTube videos, maybe that means like once a week, like you sit with him and you watch a video with him and then he does something that makes you feel loved and heard too. Like me and my dad, now we have this thing of Legos because I forced him to do with me and now he's just as obsessed as I am. Yeah. So it's like, but that took me being like, Hey, like, we were doing a daddy daughter date. And then I was like, let's go to target and buy Legos. And he did not want to do it, but he did it because I asked. Cause again, sometimes we all need to just tell people how we want to be loved. Mm -hmm. But, um, I think once you find that like common ground and like little ways that you can feel loved by each other, um, it'll make it a lot easier. And, and he might not even be aware that you feel that way. Mm -hmm. He might be like, oh, I'm just leaving her alone and letting her do her own thing, you know? Yeah, also, I I have a lot of friends that are, you know, male and having daughters now. (laughs) And- Because we're old. (laughs) And and I've been able to connect with a lot of, like, my parents' friends that are older um, and, you know, the males that have daughters too. And and I think it is hard to have, like, an automatic, like, Mm -hmm. uh, connection- on an emotional level yeah. with, uh, you know, imagine being like a man having a daughter, loving her so much, but then not, she grows up and you don't really know how to like relate yeah. to her. Whereas it just comes naturally guy to guy, girl to girl sometimes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel like this, he might be a little timid. He might be a little awkward and maybe just needs a little nudge too. Yeah. And I think too, like you should talk, I mean, you said your mom is like your best friend. Like you should talk to her about it too. And just be like, Hey mom, like I, what do you think would be a good way? Like she knows your dad well, Mm -hmm. you know, like you don't have to do this on your own, but I also think you shouldn't be going through these times of just feeling like so sad and unloved because that's not fair either. And I definitely, I mean, I grew up with all boys. So like they had like sports and things to like relate with my dad. Whereas I was like trying to find my place too with him. And it definitely took time and work on both of our ends. But like, I love and cherish my dad in our relationship we have so much. And I think it took him learning more about me and me learning more about him and learning about like how he works so hard to provide everything for us growing up and like appreciating that stuff too. So I think you just need to like, yeah, like have an open, honest conversation with him and find that like everybody has something they can like 
relate on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to work hard to find it sometimes, but we all have like that one thing, whether it's like a show you can watch together or like something, you know, do movies. Oh, Start movie. the Marvel series from the beginning and watch oh my it in order. That you'll have something to do for a long time. And I guarantee you he likes those movies. I don't even know your dad, but I feel like he likes Marvel movies. I'm just going to guess. She's listening like, no. <laughs> <laughs> he hates it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Joyce, thank you so much for writing in and sharing your concerns and trusting us with that information. Um, if you have an update later, please let us know yes. how it goes. Wishing you all the luck in the world. So proud of you. You got this. Um, this is Ashley here to read a dad joke. I wow. decided I'm going to be reading the dad joke this time because Savage. we always hear Taryn and it's my turn. Oh. oh. It's my turn. She said, sit down, please. I'm up to bat. Want to hear a joke about cats? Yes. Just kitten. <laughs> It's great. That's a good one. <laughs> that was great. I feel like we could just leave it on that at that. Oh, okay. I mean, that was funny. I felt like it you was kept smooth. turning pages. I thought you were like just gonna get on a roll. I was about to, and then I mean, I could do another one. No, do what do you, the thing about dad joke, Ash? It's whatever you want it to be. You know, the other day I wanted to buy a pair of camouflage pants. Okay, I couldn't find them anywhere. <laughs> they're camouflaged. <laughs> <laughs> guys That's thank great. you so much for listening to the podcast for being here uh at the very end you know we're, you guys are our favorites don't tell the others yes. um but it's true uh be sure to follow us on socials go buy a hat go, go buy, buy a, mug. a hat and a mug join the ua fam but get a yes. hat get your mug and uh we'll, we'll talk to you guys soon love you bye, bye. When we launched our podcast, we definitely didn't know how big and complex it was going to be. No right, one warned Ash? us. We weren't ready. No one overwhelming us. But we are so thankful for places like Monday.com where we can have the confidence that unsolicited advice can scale without scaling complexity. So let me break it down for you guys. Monday.com is a customizable platform that gives teams the ability to easily create the tools they need and want for their work. The platform is super flexible so teams can customize it to fit their needs, create a workflow from scratch, or simply pick a template, um, which is what me and Taryn like to do. <laughs> yeah. We always go for a template and then just kind of like adjust it along the way. It's suitable for any team size and teams can create their workflow on monday.com to manage anything they need, whether it's projects, processes, leads, clients, requests, or whatever your team manages. So we get a ton of emails from you guys and they're honestly super hard to keep track of. Sometimes Taryn would choose a story that I chose and sometimes I would choose a story that she had already chosen and vice versa and you get the whole picture. It got to the point where we had to play rock, paper, scissors for the stories, but instead of fighting it out, out. We now use Monday.com to organize tasks, claim stories, and best of all, we can remain besties instead of becoming mortal enemies. Monday.com has literally saved this podcast. The Monday.com work OS is great for small operations like this podcast, and it's also great for bigger operations too. That's the benefit of being scalable. With work OS, managers can see what their team members are working on with no check-ins necessary. Teams have the autonomy they need and managers can keep track of the big picture. So guys, it's a win-win. So if you would like to sign up for your free two-week trial at monday.com, you can head there today. Again, visit monday.com for your free two-week trial.